We are very happy to be joined by Kyle Posey of Niners Nation. You can follow him on Twitter at KP underscore show. And Kyle, you have been at practice. You have been watching these guys intently, but we are going to start with the quarterback, the QB one. We're going to start with Trey Lance. And we're just going to ask you a simple question, Kyle. Trey Lance, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I mean, everything that's happening right now is kind of what you kind of expected to happen. So. Yeah a first-year starting quarterback going against arguably the best defense in the NFL with the best defensive line in the NFL, probably going to struggle at first. Without Debo Samuel and Trent Williams, who would have thought? <laughs> now we are, what, uh, 10, 11 days through practice, mm. and he's all of a sudden starting to look better, starting to look more confident, starting to trust what he sees. Um, it's almost as if having your best players – around you is going to help you become a better quarterback. So there are, there are a lot of things to like. There are some inconsistencies that are going to happen. Um, there are still plenty of, you know, kind of, there are still a handful of head-scratching throws, but again, those are to be expected. I feel like people forget that these rookies are going to make mistakes. That's inevitable. So now I think it's really just about Lance learning from his mistakes. So getting like to drill down on the practices that you've been to because mm -hmm. we saw you on the on the sidelines. I actually introduced myself to you last week. Um, you know, I've been watching Kyle Shanahan's offense from from my all twenty two view and three twenty seven from the get go, and it feels like for the most part his offense is very it, it's very quarterback friendly. There is a clearly defined read and a clearly defined number two option that you can throw to, and it's all about timing. And can you get rid of the ball at a certain time in a place? And yet when I go to practice. This, the plays that I'm seeing run aren't replicative of what I'm seeing on Sundays. Would you agree with that statement? Yes. Yeah, so I think we're seeing. I, I don't. I, I don't know if it's like an evolution of the offense, but there's definitely more tweaks and changes than when Jimmy Garoppolo was under center. I think we're going to see a lot more passes down the field and outside the numbers, and that's really just because you know Trey Lance can make those throws, but. Um, I also think we're going to see him involved a lot in, in the running game. And that doesn't mean he's going to have 10 or 12 carries, but um, he's going to affect a lot of the running game as well. So I, I do agree that it, it will be different, but not necessarily in a bad way. Probably a little more variance, but that, that'll just lead to more explosive plays. Kyle Posey joining us here. You can catch his work at NinersNation.com. Uh, Kyle, over the weekend, now we actually heard yesterday that Trey Lance had – possibly his best practice of camp but over the weekend we were getting some of those numbers in we got the completion percentage and you know you combine that with what Debo said on NFL Network then people are trying to read into who Trey is as a quarterback and that he had an off day but what do you feel like something uh what do you feel like was something that people got wrong over the weekend even though they saw Trey Lance struggling and they might have seen the numbers and scratched their heads a little bit uh, what do you think people got wrong uh, after assessing that at surface value well, when you see these completion and attempt numbers in practice, they mm -hmm. really don't tell you the full right. um, full story. So a lot of these are like they're, they're drops, <laughs> and right. um, that's not Trey's fault. Or again, he's going against a defense who Trent Williams said they know the formations, they kind of know what play is coming. So he's at a disadvantage in that sense. I think another thing to point out is just that some of the, like just because it's an incompletion, that doesn't mean it was a bad play. So he's having to throw the ball down the field a lot more than we're used to seeing in this 49er offense, and those just aren't high completion percentage throws. So naturally, uh, with more attempts down the field, your completion percentage is going to go down. So I feel like that was probably the biggest miss when you're seeing all these stats come out from practice that um, he, he could have a good day, and that doesn't necessarily have to be uh, mutually exclusive with his completion percentage. I think most people agree defensive line is a strength, linebackers is a strength. Weaknesses. What's the one area... I'm not going to say who you get because we don't know. There's nobody available right now. But what's the biggest weakness of this team? If you could solve one thing, and I, and I don't know if it's even possible right now, but if you could solve one thing moving forward, what would that be in terms of weakness for the 49ers heading into the year? Yeah, the 49ers just go to that uh, safety tree and uh, trade for an all-pro. Is that, is that what they need to do? Um, I, I really don't think that there are a ton of weaknesses on the roster. Like, again, they are pretty loaded, and the fact that we're talking about this where – um, I bring up say, yeah, I don't know exactly what Talano Funga is going to look like in a game situation. I know last year that he kind of took advantage of him in man coverage and kind of isolated him. So we'll see if that's going to carry over into this year. I want to see what Aaron Banks can do. I don't want to say that he's a weakness right now, but if we're comparing him 
compared to the rookie, the fourth round rookie Spencer Burford. It seems like Burford is just more comfortable with what he's asked to do. So keeping an eye on, and probably just that interior line in general. And again, not so much a weakness, but let's see how they hold up in pads against another defense, against a defense that they're not familiar with. So interior line safety is where I would lean right now. Well, speaking with that interior line, and we are talking here with uh, Kyle Posey. You can follow him on Twitter at KP underscore show. Yeah, keeping with that offensive line, what have you seen from uh, rookie, and he's listed as the right guard as of right now, but the rookie Spencer Burford, the fourth round pick, because I think a lot of people are hearing the name, but they haven't really heard a ton about him except for what they can read every now and then. So what have you seen from the rookie Spencer Burford? Yeah, I think he looks like a guy who is confident. And Trent Williams and talked about that, and Mike McGlinchey did as well. But confidence is everything. And you don't really see him get beat a ton, which is a great sign, especially considering some of the guys that he's going up against in practice. Like, he's holding his own against guys like Javon Kinlaw. Guys, um, just, you know, we just go down the list of the names that are on this defensive line. But uh, for him to look like that, not only in one-on-ones, but in team drills, like, it's, it's very promising, which is why, again, I don't, I don't think the offensive line will necessarily look like a weakness. And in, in Burford, like to Burford's case as well, like there, again, there are going to be struggles because he's a rookie. But I think the, that Trey Lance is going to be able to pick up the offensive line and kind of hide the fact that, you know, there will be blemishes or just missed blocks here and there. But um, I think Burford's athleticism and just, I guess, his feel for the game is the best way to put it. Like they really stand out when I watch him. So uh, I don't really think he's going to be a, a liability by any means. You know, I'm looking at this running back situation, and there's some guys that I really want to see, like Mason, play on Friday night. Like, I just want to see what he looks like in a game setting against another team. Who's the guy on this team that you want to see on Friday night who may is like an under-the-radar type of a guy, but you want to see him go out there against a, a different opponent other than the 49ers in practice? Uh, Mason is a great name. I mean, he's going to be fun to watch. He He's going to for sure be a fan favorite and a – uh, somebody that everybody roots for, man, that's just, that's tough because there are a lot of names that you, you kind of want to see go up a different, you know, just a, a different guy. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod is interesting just because I think his speed gives the team another dynamic that Juwan Jennings doesn't necessarily bring to the table. So that's an interesting one. And I think um, he's, he's been a guy that kind of goes in with the team when they do like two-minute drills. So instead of Juwan Jennings, it's Ray Ray McLeod. So maybe there's more trust in, McC- in McLeod in that sense. So that's probably a guy that I'd look for in offense. I mean, I'd say all the running backs just because it's like Kyle Shanahan talks about the offensive line having musical chairs, but it seems like with a running back, there's a different guy who steps up every day. I think they have a good problem there. Um, outside of that, probably the cornerbacks, you know, they look great in practice, but these, they're familiar with these wide receivers. So uh, whether it's Mosley, whether it's Charverius Ward, Darquez Dennard, uh, they have a bunch of young guys too, like Samuel Womack who might have to play. But I want to see how the cornerbacks look against, you know, just other quality wide receivers. And, shoot, they go to they go to Minnesota next week, so uh, they have some great ones in, in Minnesota. So maybe that's um, – we'll learn a lot next week. Yeah, you mentioned that name there, Kyle, and uh, Kyle Posey joining us here. You can follow him on Twitter at KP underscore show. Follow his work at NinersNation.com. We had one of your uh, guys on here, Jordan Elliott. We had one of your colleagues, and he spoke very highly about Charvarius Ward. And I think with the contract that they gave him in the offseason, 49er fans are wondering if he can be that number one cornerback that they're looking for. What have you seen from Charvarius Ward in camp? He looks like a player that the 49ers have been dying to get. So it's one thing to be, like, competitive, and he is most of the time he's in the position where he needs to be, but it's another thing to be able to challenge these throws and get your hands on passes. It seemed like essentially every day he got his hands on a pass, and not just broke up a pass, but would intercept a pass. And we all know 49ers, mm. as, as well as they played on defense, like turnovers have been an issue, like generating turnovers. That has been a problem. So I feel like with what we've seen from Traverius Ward, who, again, Brandon Ayuk, against Juwan Jennings, against Debo Sam, no matter who he's guarding, he looks the part. And I think that's the biggest takeaway. So one of the biggest takeaways from uh, training camp so far. So uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to perform. And I imagine D'Amico Ryan's going to put a lot on his plate. But it seems like he's up for the challenge. Kyle Posey catches work at NinersNation.com. You can follow him on Twitter at KP underscore show. All right, thanks so much, Kyle. We went through the roster. I can't wait till week one. And hopefully we could uh, talk again soon. Soon enough. Yep. Thanks, guys, for having me. Take care. Thanks, Thanks Kyle. Kyle.